creation. So what do we got here? Uh, we've got the Kaheli. It's a boat that's a little bit shorter than most, about a foot and a half shorter than most of the boats out there. Um, and it's the thing with the thing that people don't realize about this canoe, it's it's a new thought, it's a new concept, and you have a longer waterline but a shorter canoe. So what I did was I took one of my older canoes, I cut it up, and the, the thought process came from watching the boat in the surf. And as I watched the canoe in the surf and a boat got on a bump, all the water lines shifted to the front of the canoe. Right? So when the water line shifts to the front of the canoe, it creates a water line in the boat that's not optimal. So you're not running at the water line that the canoe is supposed to be in. So as you drop down on a bump, all your water line shifts forward. The front of the water line comes forward, the back comes to the front as well. So now you have a really poured release in the back. So when I watch this happen, and then you level off on a bump and you have a really nice water line that is designed to be on, so you have good speed. And then as you fall off the bump, the water travels back to the back of the boat and it moves from the front to the back this way and you have a poor water line again. So I figured if you got rid of the extra boat on each end, the water would have nowhere to go and you would create your more optimal water line more of the time in the ocean. So that's where the thought came from. But as we got into it, I thought, we have 20 foot 10 boats, 20 foot 8, 9 boats, but we only have like an 18 and a half foot water line. So why do we have boats sticking out of the water on each end? Right, so what I did was I cut off the extra boat, actually created a longer water line, which gave us faster flat water speed, um, more speed and high end in the bump. But because the canoe is shorter, you now fit in the surf and you don't get stuck. So you have a canoe now in the waves that got really good speed, but is maneuverable because you don't have the extra getting stuck. Yeah. So when is this boat better than like your previous boats? When would it like what conditions would you use this in and it'd be more optimal? What conditions would it not be as optimal? Right now we're finding we got kind of lucky because we're finding it has very good flat water speed because of the length of the water line. It has almost a 19 foot water line. And most canoes have about an 18 and a half foot water line. So we're seeing really good flat water speeds. So even though it's shorter, it has a longer water line. Yeah, so it has one of the longest water lines out there of all the canoes, but it's a foot and a half shorter. And water line translates into faster flat water speed? Yeah, so if you have a longer water line, you have more glide and a higher top end, right? So the longer the water line, the faster your speed is overall. But the longer the water line, the harder it is to get up to speed. So short water line boats jump up to speed, harder to maintain. Longer water line boats usually easy to maintain the speed, hard to get up there. So when you look at the Kahe Kai that we have, it's a 19 foot two water line. That boat, once you get up to speed, I call it the couch. You sit there, you have a lot of time in between, way, in between strokes, flat water, very nice. When you get in the surf, you actually have a harder time getting that, bump, that boat back up to speed. And when you get in the waves, you have to kind of maneuver it because it's got a lot of boat on it. So with this boat, we find we got flat water speed about like the Kahe Kai, but it gets up to speed quick and then it serves amazing. So we're, I feel like we've kind of gotten a boat that does all around, a really all around, great all around boat right now. So is there ever a time you'd ride Kahikai Kai or Eukai over this boat? I mean, if I was on a total flat lake and I wanted to have a lot of time in between my strokes and just have a nice, comfortable, stable paddle with really good speed, yeah, I would. But I'm always looking for something. You get a boat wake, you get a chop, you get something you acceleration you get more acceleration with a little shorter boat yeah okay. yeah you want to show us a boat it was a designed a plumb bow is what they call it so it's straight up and down and the water line hits right about here okay. so you have no extra boat out of the water right and when you're on the wave the nice thing about this is you're cutting water this way so there's less resistance mm -hmm. on most boats you have a v that comes wider so as you come down a wave the water is actually getting to a wider point in the canoe and this keeps it real narrow so you have a really good speed it holds the speed really nice when you're on it and when you want to go over a bump or through something this just punches through it you know a lot of your k1s which are olympic kayaks and things are designed like this um, we actually added a little bit more deck space on the top so that when the waves if you do dip the bow it keeps the deck dry and if you look at how we created the flattest part of the boat up to the deck where it turns high here. Once you get water over your deck, it slows you down on a bar. So now the water can come up higher without getting over the top of the boat and creating resistance. Right, so that stays high pretty much all the way to here. 
spent a lot of time bringing up the foot wells and the gunnels here. So now we're a little higher in here as well because when you punch through a wave, you want to make sure that the water isn't coming over the top, right? So it's almost like you're sitting in a cockpit. Uh, all our boats come with the cover here. And the reason this is here is, well, one is to keep you, my feet warm in the winter when I'm in the mainland. But the main thing is water is about eight pounds a gallon. And when you get the water coming over the top in a surf, say you got two gallons of water in there, 16 to 20 pounds, you're carrying that weight until that water drains out. I mean, with the self-draining foot wells that we have, you're still talking 20, 30 seconds of carrying, you know, sometimes up to 15 pounds. So this keeps you dry the whole time. You know, you, you really feel the difference in this boat when you ride it for a while and it's dry constantly. And then say you go out on a wave in Waikiki, like I took one to the chest out here the other day, and it filled up the cockpit because I punched right into a wave. And right away I felt a couple strokes, oh my God, how heavy it was because I'm so used to never having that weight in there. Right? So to me, this is a really good benefit. It keeps like, a, our pro models are about 15 pounds, right? At some points you can be 25 pounds and you're paddling that, you know, 30 seconds, one minute, that hurts you a little bit. Yeah, 15 pounds is super light. This boat it's crazy is light, yeah, it really is, yeah, really light. And it helps us because we're a shorter boat, so we get a little bit less material, so you get a little lighter. I mean, you got maneuverability with this thing in the surf. You're not getting pushed around by the waves because you don't have the extra boat out of the water. It's a little lighter because there's less material. It'll fit a 20-foot container if you got a ship somewhere. It'll fit in your garage, right? So when I looked at the water lines on all the boats, and you know, 18 and a half feet, you know, 18 foot three around there, I'm thinking, why are we 20 foot 10? You know, with all this extra stuff, I got rid of it. And now we got a lot of benefits from it. And when we see it in the surf, it's a big deal because you have a foot and a half or a foot out of each side of a canoe, and you get down on a wave and a side bumps hits, that pushes you sideways, that stalls you, right? Or you get two points on end and the bottom of the boat's a little bit out of the water. So now we're fitting in everything, a lot of maneuverability, and you're not getting, to me, I feel like you're not getting a shoved around by the ocean. You know, you're in there working with it instead of getting pushed around by it. I never feel like I'm getting, oh, I got shoved this way, I got pushed that way. It's nice, it really is, yeah. What about on the tail or the rudder or this AMA, anything much change or not? So yeah, much? we kept the same AMA because everybody seems really happy with it. You know, it has not a lot of resistance in the flat, but you got enough buoyancy in the surf. So if you do go AMA down, it holds you up, right? And it's not to the point where some canoes, if the AMA sticks, it'll actually control the canoe. Mm -hmm. This one, it doesn't. You know, it has enough, it's loose enough in there. Move the rudder up a little bit to make sure it doesn't pop out of the water. Um, and we're playing with different rudder designs as well to try to find the most carry and the most, you know, the least amount of drag we have is better. But we also want to have enough rudder in there to hold you on the side of a bump. So we're, we're toying with those things all the time. So I noticed too, it's kind of easy to change out the rudder. So like just unscrew that, that piece in the back yeah, and Phillips the head, comes out, right? Phillips head screwdriver, you take it off, you're changing your rudder in about 30 seconds. So you yeah. almost can have interchangeable rudder for one for downwind, one And for that's the plan surf, in the future is to have for, different size. Yeah different size rudders for different days uh -huh. and you know swept back rudders for weeds in the mainland or you know other places so you know the rudder is a whole another part that we don't spend a lot of time on and we're looking at that a lot more now as well we have our new driver here <laughs> he's uh actually picked up his new canoe a couple weeks ago um, he has really good feedback he's been giving us great feedback on it and we've been getting a lot i have to say since this canoe came out there's been a lot more people get contacting me that picked it up telling me how much they like it. So it is kind of a fun deal, you know. This canoe is a gigantic step forward from, from the other small incremental improvements. Because when I jumped on my previous canoe to this one, it's like night and day. Like catch bumps easier, uh, you can maneuver in the bumps. The high end speed is super high, so you just jump over stuff. On the Hawaii Kai runs, you almost feel like you can just launch over the bump. Um, and then going upwind, it doesn't slap as much. So when you go up and over a wave and come back down, it sticks and you can accelerate down the back. Whereas the other canoes, you would just come up and over and back and you would smack the front of it and lose speed and then have to kind of yank your way up to speed again. So this, this canoe makes up for a lot. And I, I'm kind of like a, you know, sort of average paddler. So I used to miss a lot of bumps, like just barely on the back of the bump, paddle hard and then miss it. 
but this one you can pull in from behind and you can just yank yourself into it if you make a mistake so it's very forgiving I think yeah. I I think I took like 10 minutes off my time from Hawaii Kai, <laughs> my, my record time, so. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the boat I cut up was heavy, and I used it for about three or four months. We cut it a bunch of times to make sure it got it to where we wanted it to work. And I would paddle that boat heavy before I would paddle any of my other boats or any boats that were real light. And, I would, and what you feel with this boat is you're actually using a lot less energy during the day yeah. to go the same speed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was paddling uh, on a kind of flat water in Waikiki with some friends a couple days ago and um, they were on one of the older models and I was riding this one so I was paddling moderate pace, staying side by side and then we traded boats and I had to paddle about 20% harder to stay even. It's just like a lot more work. So then I asked for my boat back. <laughs> so. You cut back up you mean? Yeah, I said, give me my boat back. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed yeah. on this boat, because I, I, I tested it out in just flat water, and then, but that's kind of hard for me to tell because I rarely paddle in that. And then I tested it out on a, on a Hawaii Kai run where it's, it was fairly choppy and it wasn't spaced out and so on. And I noticed that this thing, it almost caught a number of the, the swells itself where I would normally have to kind of paddle hard on it, and it didn't fall off the wave as much. Is that kind of... Yeah, I mean, what happens is because you have the length of the water line on here, when you're on the wave, you have a good top end speed. And what I like about it the most is once I catch a bump, it's easy to get on the bump. But once I get on the bump, I can look to farther to yeah. different areas of where I want to go. I yeah. have that top end speed to run over here, over there, or over the top of it. The reason I, and we're still kind of learning what it's doing, right? Because um, it's a new deal. No one's really done anything at this length and tried it before. I'm seeing, I think, when you fall off of a bump, there's less boat in the back sticking out that holds you up longer. So you fall off quicker. But when you come down this way, there's less boat in the front to take it longer to drop. So the boat, you know, it kind of does this hobby horse thing. Mm -hmm. So it falls off fast, but it picks up quick. Yeah. And when we trade it off with boats playing around with the prototypes, you, it just seemed like this boat, the bow was down more than the other boats. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and I, mean, I notice that the side chop and like side wind doesn't affect you as much. Oh, no, you have less boat to push you around, right, in the wind. Yeah, so you have less wind resistance. And even like, you know, like when the boat, you go right, and you get hitting by bumps on your left, it doesn't feel like I'm going to spin out as much as I, I would on something else. Right, and some, I was just talking to one of our guys on the Big Island. He said he used it in a run, and something I had noticed was when you run down the line at an angle on a bump, and yeah. you see one coming from the other side, yeah. you have the speed on the angle, but you can also turn right into the big one when you want to. So you have that maneuverability. Yeah. yeah, that's all stuff we couldn't do before on the other boats. Like, you just could never do that. But on that run, I think you described the conditions as kind of mediocre. Yeah. But uh, to me, it was like all-time epic conditions. Because you were just launching down I these... I think it's only epic because he was blowing me away. <laughs> <laughs> launching down these bigger ones. And the top speed is so high that you have all this time to look out in front. So if you see something in front that you want to hop, to get behind something bigger, you just launch over it. I mean, it's not even hopping. You feel like you're just launching over it. I think it's just more enjoyable, this boat. You know, like, this it's... This is a more enjoyable boat. It's when, less effort and, you know, it's just like on that day, I mean, even though it was kind of almost junk, if you ask me, <laughs> um, the conditions, whereas I would be complaining on my other boat, I, I would still have enjoyed myself because I wasn't working that hard. You know, Jimmy Austin says it makes even the smaller or flatter days fun. Yeah. You know, he's a rough water guy. Yeah. And then Danny Ching is saying, he says it, it makes me work harder because I have more options. This is the so only he looks, I can actually jump over stuff with. Yeah. He says, so I'm always, stuff. he goes, I'm looking for this and now I know I can get there and I know I can get there. So I actually work harder because I know I can get that. You know? yeah. But if anyone asked me when I was doing it, they said, what do you think of the boat? I would always say, it's a really fun thing. Even in like super light wind where it's just like these slight sort of ripples in the water that are kind of moving, you can just pull right behind them and just go with it. It, it just pulls right in. Even on like, you know, eight miles an hour wind or whatever. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment, give us a thumbs up, and see you next time.